Okay, traders, welcome to today's live analysis session with me, Patrick Munley. If you can hear me and you can see the Tickmill welcome screen, if you could just type a Y in the chat box so I know we're, uh, we're good to go. Okay, so before we get going with today's uh, chart pack, as always, we want to adhere to the risk disclaimer. Uh, we know that uh, trading any financial instrument carries an inherent risk and you have the potential to lose more capital than you necessarily have on deposits. Uh, but most importantly for today, any views or opinions expressed by me here today in this session are solely mine. They are not indicative of or representative of Tickmill UK or Tickmill Europe Limited. So before we jump into the charts, let me just, for those who are here for the first time, uh, give a, a brief overview of, uh, of who I am, where I'm coming from. Um, like I said, my name is Patrick Munley. After I graduated from King's College London, I joined a City PLC consulting firm. After a couple of years learning the ropes, I left with some colleagues and went on to co-found and successfully exit a consulting startup post a merger in late 2004. I then moved on to explore my passion for markets. So with some capital to play with and some time on my hands, I started day trading or more appropriately day gambling the S&P 500. Um, after some early beginner's luck, I racked up some, some pretty solid gains. Uh, however, as is often the case, my beginner's luck ran out. As the market phase changed, I began to average down into losing positions, giving back all my gains and ultimately experiencing a six-figure personal financial hit, which to say was a gut-wrenching and sobering experience is an understatement. I really had to stand back and figure out if it was going to be feasible for me to make a living from the market. So I decided to get serious about trading and sort out a mentor who had an excellent trading track record. So I worked with my mentor for uh, 18 months to two years. It was a period during which I upped not just my technical game, researching and developing a strategy that suited my personality. I extensively back and forward tested this strategy and then developed a rigorous risk management approach to underpin it. But most importantly, during this period of mentorship, I significantly developed my mental game. And probably most important was the watershed shift from being a highly goal orientated financial gains focused individual to becoming a purely process orientated uh, individual. So what does that mean? Well, it means I had to stop focusing on what I could make from the markets and start focusing solely on managing my mindset to allow me to consistently execute my trading strategy, oftentimes in the face of neg negative feedback from the markets in the form of losing trades. Once you become process orientated and have a professional trading mindset and you understand the true nature of trading as being a numbers game in which you're simply playing the probabilities, you lose the emotional attachment and that hellish emotional roller coaster of uh, living and dying by the outcome of individual trades. So I'm not concerned with the outcome of individual trades or even a string of trades. My next folk, my focus is on the next 100 trades because I know if I focus on excellence and execution, my trading edge will demonstrate itself over an extended series of outcomes. My multi-strategy approach has delivered profitable annual returns since 2008. Uh, since 2013, which are the performance figures you can see on the screen, I've also been managing investor capital through a managed account service, delivering annual positive returns. I'm currently responsible for managing a multi-million dollar portfolio. Since 2010, I've also personally mentored and uh, over 100 private traders of all experience levels, from complete novices to former CME floor traders, in helping them develop the technical and mental skills to reap consistent returns on the markets. I've also consulted to numerous brokers and trading education brands, contributing written content, webinars, and live presentation content on a range of topics from market analysis to trading strategy development and execution. 
In addition to my fund management and private mentoring, I'm also a resident market expert for Tickmill, providing a daily market outlook for the FX majors. And then I also provide a chart of the day or a trading setup that I'm currently tracking in the markets. Uh, my other passion project, I guess, is as head of trading and trader education for a leading trader education brand called fxcareerswap.com. We offer development and funding to uh, retail trading talents at FX Career Swap. We don't just develop retail traders market and trading strategy knowledge. We work on mindset development through our structured program that culminates in uh, being able to manage the firm's capital at zero personal financial risk. So that gives you a flavor of where I'm coming from today. And if you want any more information about Ticknil, uh, you have a, co uh, sorry, about FX Career Swap, um, contact details are on the screen if you would uh, like to learn more about that. Now, before we get going with the charts, let me just turn off the audio feed that's running in the background there, and uh, that will help us immensely. Okay, so um, we're going to move straight into the charts today because I've got a bunch of charts I want to cover with you. Um, I think we're potentially moving into a phase now where we could see uh, a bunch of opportunities open up. We'll start just quickly looking at the S&P 500. I uh, covered this in, in detail last week, so I'm not going to go over that again, but we are certainly getting into an interesting area now uh, with this S&P 500. We're, we're actually, we've made a marginal new high here, coming back into that um, ascending trend line resistance, and uh, we failed to close above it yesterday. And if we can't get a close above there, then I think we, we probably have a, another corrective phase, uh, three wave correction. But ultimately, the level I'm looking at, the area of real interest for me is this 3728 area. There's a bunch of confluence uh, setting up there now. And, um, and like I discussed last week, I think that should uh, be an area from which we see a certainly a tradable correction. I'm talking, uh, I'm not talking, you know, 10 or 20 points in the S&P. I'm, I'm talking uh, a few hundred points in the S&P uh, from what I can see at the moment in terms of what's developing. So uh, whilst we don't, whilst we can't get back above this 3650 area at the moment, then that certainly suggests that we could see an equality pullback somewhere into this um, 3500 area. And then maybe we get that last leg to the upside into that 37.28. And that's where I'll be looking for the bearish reversal patterns to set short positions. Uh, I'm certainly targeting a retest of support here at 32.63, maybe even down here into this 3200 area as, uh, as the objective for the corrective move um, that I envisage is, uh, is coming our way. Um, this is the, my, the trading time frame chart for me, the daily time frame. And you can see I've got this area highlighted. Uh, we're not quite there yet, um, but certainly this is one that's on my radar. Whilst we hold this trend line here, this interim trend line, then, uh, then I think we can squeeze up into this area. And then, like I say, we'll be watching uh, for short uh, selling opportunities. Similar story, obviously, the NASDAQ is a little slightly different as we have uh, an equality objective versus this swing here, uh, which comes in at that 12,500 level just above those prior highs, which could be an interesting potential bull trap there, uh, but we'll have to see how we respond if once and if we get into to that area. Uh, moving on, we have the dollar index. So dollar, uh, let's look at the DXY, the broader dollar index first. We're sitting right at the year to date lows now. Um, what I do notice here is as we are in this area, we have got uh, some pretty significant momentum divergence here. So. Where we get where we get these double tops, triple uh, double bottoms, double tops, triple tops, triple bottoms, and we have this momentum divergence. I'm always alert to the potential that we could see a, a snapback here and a correction before ultimately going lower. Um, as uh, as those who follow me will know, I believe we are in a, uh, a five wave decline here in the dollar index, uh, relatively uh, well defined pattern, um, which should see us trade down into uh, into the 90 area is what I'm looking for. Um, and how I get that measurement and I just, is this is the this is our wave one. And so more often than not, what we're looking for in a wave five to complete a pattern is, is equality as a minimum objective. So if we measure from there to there and we overlay that measurement from our wave four high, which is here, then we get the equality object objective uh, highlighted for us here. So it's currently coming in just above the 90 handle. 
And then we get further confluence if we use the um, fib retracement tool and we just fib the wave four zone and you can see what we've got coming in just below us there at 89.92 is the 161 extension of the um, of the three four there. So that's this is our target zone in terms of uh, the downside objective for the the dollar index to complete um, or, or potentially complete this initial leg to the downside from those uh, from those March highs. So that's what uh, what we're looking at now. Like I say, because we've got this momentum divergence, we could see a corrective phase um, before looking to uh, to move lower here. And if we are going to see that, then let's take a look at. Oops, let's take a look at uh, where that could develop for us. So we, we certainly want to pay attention to, let's redraw that. So at the moment we would have this uh, channel to pay attention to. So any correction really back up into the, the, the midpoint of this channel, so uh, the, the apex here, so somewhere around 93.25 uh, is more than feasible. And certainly if we look at, um, at this last collect, uh, corrective leg we saw here, and that would give us that, that gives us a target, a symmetry swing target of 92.90. So anywhere back into this zone um, could give us a shorting opportunity and or the trend line resistance, which comes in just above at 93.50. So it's, um, there is the potential that we, you know, we do get a, a correction here, but ultimately uh, the roads look like they're leading towards this 90 handle um, to the downside in the dollar index. Similar story, obviously, in the equal weighted dollar index. Again, we're testing potential double bottom. We've got that momentum divergence. So we know that technically there is the potential for a, a corrective move here. Before we uh, before we ultimately break lower, let's check in with the uh, dollar one. This is uh, still in a still clearly defined channel breaking to the downside. But again, we have found some support here um, at this uh, six fifty four level. And um, if the dollar index is going to pop, then we would anticipate that that would take the dollar yuan with it as well, and we could be back up retesting trendline resistance at the six sixty five handle. <laughs> In terms of the Swissy, um, what I'm looking for here now uh, with this Swissy is the potential for an inverse head and shoulders to um, develop. You can see again, thinking in terms of um, divergence to the down, uh, divergence in terms of the lows being made here. So we had this low, and you can see we made a high in terms of momentum. So there is, I. I I believe that we've got the potential to, to see a leg higher here. It's just where we're going to get that from. And at this stage, the preferred scenario for me would be that, um, that we run down into uh, this area here and that acts as support to take us up then into this 93 area. So that's what I'm tracking with, uh, with the dollar Swiss here, looking for that inverse head and shoulders pattern to develop uh, in and around that 90, um, 9030 area. Looney. So we're in this big descending triangle pattern here. And again, if, if we're going to see a pop in the dollar, then I believe we can see the same in the Looney as well, and potentially takes us back up into um, the descending trend line resistance here. So we get this move. If we can hold the current levels, you can see that an equality swing would, uh, would basically take us up into um, the descending trend line resistance from there. I think then we might break lower in terms of the loony, but we'll have to see how the, uh, you know, the, the dollar dynamic plays out. But certainly whilst we hold current levels, if we can get a close back above uh, the daily VWAP. Let's just blow this up a bit so we can get the exact level we want to track here. So what I'd be looking for on the daily chart is a close back above, let's say 30, 130, 40, and that would set up this move into the 132.25 uh, area. So keep an eye on that. Uh, euro dollar. So the euro inverse, obviously, to the dollar index. And so we are in, you know, a fairly well-defined channel here. And again, if we think just in terms of the, you know, highlighting the, uh, the 
wave count for us here in terms of defining the structure. We have uh, a wave four low here, and then we'd be expecting the wave five to complete uh, somewhere up here. And again, using the, the, the uh, trend base uh, fib extension tool, we can get a clear measurement of where that should uh, where that should complete. So whilst we hold 116 as the low, then our wave five equality objective would actually be there at, uh, at the 121 area. Now, if we, um, if we measure with the fib retracement tool, the three, four, you can see we also get the 127 extension. So when we're looking for these wave five target zones, we're tracking the equality versus wave one. And then we're also looking for some FIB confluence versus the three, four, we're either looking at the 127 extension or the 1618 extension to help guide our, our area, the target zone that we're tracking um, for the pattern to complete. Now, one thing we, we want to pay attention to here at the moment is, um, as I've talked about in previous weeks, we do have a volatility crush at the moment, which is indicative of these wave four consolidations in markets. But whilst we have that, if you're, you know, if you're targeting this area, you certainly need to, uh, you need to be very patient with your, uh, with your positions because this can be a, a grind as opposed to a thrust. Ideally, it would be a thrust that would add credence to the idea that we uh, will see a decent correction from there. Um, but at the moment, especially with the US out today on holidays, uh, the Thanksgiving holidays, we've got low, low volume, low participation. So. Uh, we're not seeing uh, too much in the way of, of action at the moment. Do note, though, that um, in terms of the, uh, the, the area that, that is, is posing a challenge to the euro to get through is this 119.18 in terms of a closing basis. And that's the 78.6% retracement of the 3.4 uh, decline. And that's noteworthy because if we can't get that close through the 78.6% retracement, then there is the potential that we're going to fail and not make a wave five high and actually roll over from from these current levels. So pay attention to the if the first close above this area will add credence to the idea that we're going to go and take a look at that uh, 121 area. But if we you know we've had a couple of attempts here um, and we're not uh, we're not we're just not getting through there at the moment and that's that's something that I certainly pay attention to. As, uh, as this could be a bull trap that's, um, that's developing. And obviously bear in mind, we're trading at potential double bottom lows on both of the, the dollar indexes. And those are warnings, that, or they're, they're certainly um, signs in the market that I pay attention to as, uh, as we could fail to get up here and actually roll over and retest range support um, into the close of the year. Uh, Euro yen, this is uh, a position I've, I've put on this morning. We're uh, third touch of this descending trend line, and uh, we've got a four-hour rejection on the intraday charts. And I, uh, I saw a, a small short position there. We'll see how that plays out. Um, because what we've got with this euro yen is if we um, is if we continue to hold uh, this area here. So this is our swing high. It's our reaction low. And whilst we hold one twenty-five. Uh, 15 as the pivot, then the equality objective is down here at 119, back into these prior lows, um, and that would uh, that would be the objective. Whilst we hold um, whilst we hold 125 as our as our resistance area, we've also got that uh, descending trend channel support coming in there. So I don't think we're going there in a straight line if we are going there, but uh, at the moment, watch. And again, what would add credence to this, this trade and, and give, it some, uh, give it some potency on the downside if we get this close below uh, the daily VWAP at 123.84, uh, that's, uh, that's what I'll be watching into the close today um, on the Euro Yen. Sterling, obviously, uh, grinding it up in terms of the, uh, the Brexit headlines. And I think we're coming into a very interesting area here. And it's an interesting market dynamic that we're coming into as well, this idea of buying the rumor. So the market bids up the, the, the instruments on the rumor, which is obviously the deal is gonna get done. And then the deal gets done. And um, certainly from, from current levels, what we could be looking at is, um, is something like this. So maybe we get a bit of a pullback here, but then we hit these prior highs. Uh, we've got the monthly R3, the weekly R3, 
And I've been paying very close attention also on the basis that we're in the midpoint of the defining channel here. So we haven't been able to trade back into the upper half of the trend channel, which again is indicative of, of some underlying uh, momentum weakness in the market. So any move up into this, the midpoint of the channel and we get a bearish rejection, then I think that's gonna set up a uh, certainly a tradable pullback in sterling uh, to wash out some of these wheat longs and we could be back testing this trend line support down towards 131 before uh, reigniting uh, the bullish spirits to the upside. So pay very close attention to how we trade at these prior highs. And if we, uh, if we see rejection candles there, you can look on the four hour charts, the hourly charts if you're so minded, but certainly on the daily chart, a rejection from this area sets up a move back to, to check support down to the, the 131 area. Um, Sterling Aussie is an, another one that has uh, has some held its trend channel support. The third test it held didn't really get anywhere to the upside, and now we've had a rollover here. The fourth test is is likely to break the trend channel support, and if it does, what we've then got um, versus this swing high, this swing low, and if this is going to be our, our swing high here, this 183, then we have an equality objective. Uh, which would take us down to this 177.45, which then would put us potentially into an inverse head and shoulders scenario. So um, if we if we do take out the channel support here at uh, 180, I'd be looking for a move down to 177, and then certainly watching how we trade here, bullish reversal patterns to uh, set up the potential for a, a long trade in terms of a, a bigger inverse head and shoulders scenario and the, on that structure. Um, sterling yen is another one I'm watching. So sterling yen, again, in the midpoint of the channel, failing to capture or get back above that, that mid, mid area of the channel. And, um, and we've got these prior highs over here, if we look left, uh, 139.76, tried to get through there um, in early November and failed. And now we're back up testing that area. And it looks like we're getting um, some decent supply there. So whilst this, uh, again, looking for a, a close back below the, uh, the daily VWAP here, 138.90s, I think that sets up a retest of uh, channel support. So what we'd be looking at again would be an equality move. So this swing versus that swing. So you can see how that would put us straight back into the ascending trend channel support. And then from there, longs might look to, to reload and try and get into the top half of the channel or we break lower. So, um, so again, opportunity here, watching the closes on this, uh, this sterling yen. This, again, it's, it's an important concept to understand this inability of price to, to break it. Uh, Thao, um, if you, I, I can see you've raised your hand for a question. If you can just hold your questions until I've finished um, going through the charts and then I'll open up for, uh, for a, for a brief Q&A session. So if you can just jot down your question and then um, once, we've, uh, once we've been through the charts, I'll, uh, I'll give you an opportunity to uh, ask any questions you might have. Um, so that's Sterling in. Now we're gonna take a look at these commodity currencies where I see uh, opportunity developing. Um, first one here is the Aussie. So you can see how we traded in this section over here. Uh, so this was back in uh, September. So let's just put a, uh, let's just highlight this area. So we consolidated after the, the breakdown and then, uh, sorry, after the initial breakdown, and then we rolled over. Now, if we clone that time period and the price period and we overlay it versus our current price action, you can certainly see the similarities. Now, the, this is what, what I refer to as, as market mirroring, so to speak. Uh, price has a a funny way of mirroring itself in a certain set of circumstances. And so in this instance, what we'd be looking for now is, um, is one, one more push higher here to take us up into the trend channel resistance, the uh, monthly R3, the weekly R3, and just through these prior highs. So any, any move up into this, uh, this 7430 area, Again, watching for bearish reversal patterns because I think we've got the opportunity then to trade down into the trend channel support at the 71 area. And again, in this idea of, um, of a bull trap, so to speak. So watch how price responds when we get into this 7040, 
7430 area. Again, you can be looking on the four hour hourly charts for, uh, for intraday signals. Certainly I'll be watching the daily response when we get into this area, because I think, like I say, we've got uh, the potential to trade up into there and then get a, a washout uh, to the downside and retest 71 as, as support. Um, the Aussie yen, trading at its trend line resistance, but we're, we're holding at the moment. So this, this one isn't giving me a signal at the moment. The Aussie Swiss is a little bit more interesting. And the reason why I'm interested in the Aussie Swiss is because we're coming back into these prior highs. And what we can clearly see in terms of the Aussie Swiss is we've got a wave pattern here. Um, it's pretty straightforward to identify. So that's our wave four. So where's our wave five gonna complete? Well, it looks to me like it will probably complete into a double top. Now, again, what we wanna do is we wanna get some measurement on this. So in a quality move versus the wave one from our wave four low, puts us right back into this 67.30. And we've got, uh, so we've got that structure resistance. And what we, what we also wanna pay attention to, to add uh, further evidence to this potential opportunity, is again, this idea of momentum divergence. So any pop up into this 67.30, double top, nice divergence on our momentum study. And again, you can be looking on those intraday four hour charts um, or certainly watch the daily close when we get into this area because I think it's an opportunity on the short side then. And, um, and really we can, you know, at a minimum what we could be thinking about is uh, it's certainly a 50% retracement. So if we go to this, this leg up here, so if we do complete in around that 67.30, well then we could easily be trading back at the 65.50 area. So, you know, there's 200 pip opportunity there. And, um, and that coincides with the midpoint of, um, of the range that we've been trading in since June. So uh, we define the range, That's the, this is the range resistance clone this and bring it down here and then we've got range support so uh, this i think this is a very interesting trade and again watching how we respond uh, once we get up into this 67.30 area as a cad as a cad's in a similar setup to be honest with you um I, this is obviously if we're going to think in terms of gain we want to highlight the wave structure have we, ha you know, does this does this qualify for a, a, a three four? Well, it could do. Um, you prefer to see something similar in scope in terms of price, not necessarily time, uh, with the uh, with wave two there. Um, but what? Uh, let's just bring in the expansion tool and get an idea of the target zone. So if this is four, um, one second. Let me work. So this is one, and then we bring that to there. So again, target zone, if this is our way for low, um, the target zone would again bring us a very interesting um, double top scenario because it would complete right into the prior highs. And again, similar story to that, uh, that Aussie Swiss in terms of a nice, um, a nice range that we can track here. So certainly we could be thinking of a, a retest of the midpoint of the, ch of the channel or the, the, the range and potentially down into to range support. So these, uh, some of these Aussie pairs uh, or crosses, sorry, look very interesting at the moment, especially if we can get up into these prior highs. And again, what do we want to pay attention to in terms of the indicators? Well, we want to see momentum, uh, momentum divergence hold for us there. So uh, watching this 60, 96, 80 area in terms of the Aussie Swiss. Now the Kiwi also setting up, Kiwi's sitting right on the top side of its channel here. And, uh, and we're starting to see a potential stall out. Um, we've got divergence versus the area where the channel initiated from. So this, uh, this adds to the, the weight here. What we haven't really clearly got as such is that, uh, is that really nicely defined wave structure to complete this move. So it could be actually that this wave, that this, if, we, if this is gonna be an interim high, 
but that will give us actually the, uh, the third wave completion. And then we'd look for a wave four and then a wave five like so before then seeing uh, the bigger move to the downside. So let's just <coughs> put in some levels to give us some targets here. So if, if we hold this 70 level initially here, then we look for a move back down into the 68.30 as our, our wave four objective. And if that's gonna be where we, we, we stall out in terms of our wave four, then we can think in terms of targets again, using the measurement tool. And you can see then what we get would be a move up into the 7045 area uh, to complete the wave five pattern there. And then from there, I think uh, we could expect a, a pullback certainly to, to retest 68 as support and potentially the channel support down to 67 um, is the zone to watch. Um, in terms of some of the uh, Kiwi crosses, and we've got some interesting um, price patterns here. I, I, th I think we might have uh, a wave five completing here in terms of the Kiwi yen. Let me draw that in for you. So we're going to use this as our one, two, three, and a four. And this could be our five completing now. So let's just uh, get our measurement tool and, uh, and see if we can see if we're holding. So there we go. So you can see this is our wave four low. And whilst we hold here, we, the target we're looking for obviously is an equality objective at a minimum versus wave one, which is 73.32. Uh, we basically touched that to the pip and we're now getting a pullback. So if uh, certainly if we take out yesterday's low, that will add uh, validity to the idea that we've got a wave five high in place. And then we can start thinking about downside targets if we're gonna get in on the short side and uh, we take a look at the 50% retracement puts us right back into the middle here at 71. So again, setting up a potential uh, potential 200 pip move there to the downside if, uh, if this is gonna be our way five high. Um, Kiwi Swiss, uh, similar story. Uh, let's just bring this, quickly draw these in. So we've got our one, two, our three, and our four, potential five into the trend channel resistance here. So again, just to give us further um, conviction, let's see if we have a quality versus our wave one from our wave four low. You can see we've just come into that target zone. So again, this sets up an opportunity, I think here on the, uh, potentially on the short side, and we can think in terms of targets, 50% retracement, we put us right back into this prior resistance to it now act as support at the 6170 area. So let's see if, uh, if we can get price back below the daily VWAP here at the 63.32. Then you've got to trade back down into this uh, 6185 zone. And Kiwi CAD, similar story here. Um, but with this one, again, I don't, I'm not convinced at this stage that we've had our wave our wave four here, I think we're still in wave three. So if that's the case again, we know what, uh, what to do. So we have one, two, this could be our wave three high. And then we're looking for our wave four uh, and a quality objective is, uh, is just one tool we can use. So if we think about wave four completing in a similar price vein, not necessarily time, but certainly in terms of price, we want to see Oops, let's leave that up there and then go here. So we have one, two. So if we can get a four that completes in and around here, these prior highs, and let's just uh, measure the price movement there and overlay it here. So you can see we get a target for our wave four to complete at the 90 level prior highs. And if we hold that area, the 90 area, then we get our wave five targets puts us up into the 92 zone. And from there, then we'd be looking for 
the Met secret. Note also, this is why I'm not I'm not convinced that this is our that this is our, our, our fifth wave high, because we haven't got any divergence in terms of the momentum study at this point, really. So this adds to my this adds to my conviction level that we need to get this four pullback because what that will do in terms of the momentum study is give us a pullback like so. And then as price moves up here into the wave five high, we should actually get a lower high then in terms of the momentum study, giving us that divergence, allowing us to, to take a counter trend trade uh, to the short side. Last but not least, we'll take a quick look at gold and Bitcoin, and then I'm going to, to let you guys go. So gold has come into the target zone, uh, the 1805, 1826, we're stalling at the moment. Um, we've got this trend channel support just below us at 1781 these prior highs here as well. So I'm watching to see how gold responds here because we may get say uh, a move, a, a corrective move higher here in terms of gold. Um, obviously if the dollar is gonna hold a double bottom then it could be that gold is, is gonna trade lower. And we do have the, the next target to the downside in terms of gold is 1740. So again, watch the dynamic between the dollar and gold at the moment. It's, uh, that's one to, to pay attention to. And last but not least, because it's all over headlines, we've got Bitcoin here. I'm looking ideally now, um, we've traded into the top side of the channel, the weekly projected range support, we've got a pullback. Ideally, we'd like to see a three wave move now to retest this uh, 15,000 area um, would be ideal. And that could set up then the next leg higher in terms of, uh, in terms of Bitcoin. So keep an eye on this one. It's uh, the, the, certainly I think is potential is trading uh, technically very well at the moment. And so, um, so watch for a, quick three wave correction here over the next three or four days. And then uh, and then see if we're into this 50% retracement area, 14.65 or around this 15,000, certainly be an area of interest to, uh, to pay attention to. Okay, so those are the charts I'm watching and positions I'm, uh, I'm looking to, to play. Are there any questions? You can type into the chat box if, you, if there's a pair you want to take a look at, I haven't covered. CAD, Swiss. So CAD Swiss is really just uh, pretty frustrating at the moment, just going sideways um, in this uh, ever increasing triangle. And, um, and what you'd have to think at the moment is whilst we hold these highs, then, uh, then there's the potential that um, we're gonna see an equality move like so, put us back down into channel support maybe from there we you know we break to the upside or we break down and then we pull back and use that as um, resistance to to retest these prior lows is uh, is the scenario we're tracking in terms of the the cad swiss does that make sense um sterling cad Again, yeah, just in the channel at the moment, not really, uh, not really too, you know, the price action isn't very exciting. Um, we have taken out the, um, the descending trend line resistance, but again, because of the volatility, because we're in such a low volatility environment at the moment, we're not seeing these, these breakouts really break out as such. What we're tending to do is just break, break uh, the, the technical level and then pull back into the ranges. Uh, so it's pretty, <laughs> frustrating trading at the moment to be honest with you because of the the nature of the volatility environment but um sterling cad is not uh let's just see what we've done here versus this so you can see we're holding really just around the equality objective so you could uh, you could make the case that um you know that we've been correcting this move here where we've hold the 78 uh 78.6% retracement and the equality objective. So it could be that we've got to go back down and retest uh, trend channel support from the current levels. Uh, no, I'm not short sure. Bitcoin. Um, I'm waiting to, to add to, uh, to long positions. Any other questions? Okay, if there aren't any other questions, I'm going to wrap this session up here. Thanks very much for your time. I hope this was helpful and we'll, uh, 
we'll reconvene at the same time next week. Thanks very much, everybody. <laughs>